Hello, in this video I show how to estimate the intrinsic value of a common stock. First, I show some of the features of common stock which include the fact that it is the basic equity security of the firm and in that regard common stockholders have the residual claim on the firm and that means that they receive their dividends only after bondholders have received the interest on their debt and preferred stockholders have received dividends on their preferred equity in that order, in that pecking order. Now dividends that are paid to common stock, it's important to know that they are not generally fixed and as a result that does present some valuation challenges. As you know, to determine the value of an asset we need three things. We need the expected cash flows in the case of a stock, it would be the dividends, we need the required rate of return which as you can see here is going to be the discount rate RE and thirdly we need maturity, the investment period there is none in the case of equity valuation and so as a result of that we're going to have to uh, make certain assumptions since dividends paid to common stock are not fixed and since maturity is really indeterminate and so this is a summary of the valuation methods that are generally used to determine the intrinsic value of a common stock the first of which is the zero growth model but this model is analogous to what we learned in preferred stock valuation because this is a situation this is the case where the firm pays stable and regular dividends the same amount every period and so we're going to use the present value of a perpetuity which is what you see right here in which case we divide the dividend you receive by the required rate of return so earlier we showed that the general valuation model which you see down here in the lower right corner collapses to be equal to simply the cash flow divided by the required rate of return if in fact the cash flows stay the same from period to period it can be mathematically shown to come down to this simple valuation formula so in this example we simply divide the annual dividend of 2.8 by the required rate of return of 16 percent to find the intrinsic value of the stock to be 17 dollars and 50 cents in the second case, here we're assuming that the investor buys a stock, plans to hold it for a defined period of time and then sell it for an estimated price. In this example, the estimated price is $37 and this investor has estimated dividends over the next three years to be as shown here, $2 in the first year, 2.10 in the second and 2.5 in the third. So this is your timeline and with this, we should be able to simply use the basic present value formula to determine the intrinsic value of this stock. So this is the working formula and we substitute and solve. It's, it really is as simple as that. Now obviously the tall order would be estimating the price of the stock three years from today. But there are certain assumptions we can make in, in that regard. But before we get to that, the third and perhaps most widely used valuation method um, is the constant growth model the case where we assume that the firm pays dividends that grow at a constant rate into the foreseeable future. Now, if that's the case, then um, we can use this constant growth model, aka the Gordon Growth uh, Dividend Discount Model, um, after the financial uh, scholar that derived it. And we can show, actually, that going back to this basic valuation model, that if the numerator of the cash flows are expected to grow at a constant rate from year to year, it actually collapses to be simply what you see right here, which is the last dividend that was paid, d sub zero, growing it at the rate of g. Now, in other words, the next dividend that you can expect to receive, d1, is equal to the current dividend growing at the rate of g. So either you use this formula if given d sub zero, as in this example, or you use this formula if given the next dividend. Uh, which is D1. The denominator is the difference between the required rate of return on equity and the constant growth rate. Now, caution now. To use this constant growth model, the required rate of return on equity must exceed the growth rate. All right, that's the caveat right there. So, in this, uh, with the data for this example, we determine the price of the stock to be $19.09 using the constant growth formula. So now, here, 
if you we are given the uh, price we can actually estimate the required rate of return or in this case the expected rate of return how much you can expect to earn going forward so if you pay this price and you're going to receive 2.75 dollars in dividends and your stock grows at a constant rate of three percent we can simply solve for re the rate of return from the constant growth formula to be either this if given d sub zero or this if given d1 the next dividend so with the data given here since we have d sub zero here's going to be our working formula for calculating the expected rate of return r hat and this comes out to be equal to 10.87 percent divide up into the two components of return you can expect to receive from a stock which would be this first component here which is your dividend yield that's your dividend expected dividend as a percent of price plus the growth rate in the stock which is a reflection of the capital gains yield components of your investment and I've color coded them here to delineate their uh, essence all right this component is your dividend yield and this is the growth rate um, reflecting your capital gains yield so now in this final model it really is a hybrid of the last two a case in which given your current dividend we can, and uh, your dividends growing at 17 percent in this example we can definitely estimate the dividends over the next three years during which period they will grow at 17 percent so we can get a d1 d2 and d3 right right up here and then finally would be at, the, at this horizon, at the end of the horizon, we can definitely estimate P3, which is the price of the stock at the end of the third year, if we assume that dividends will then begin to grow at a constant rate of, in this example, 5% into the foreseeable future. So with that, we simply come out here, estimate the dividends, all right, growing um, the current dividend at the rate of 17% to get D1, and then one more time at 17% to get D2, and then get D3. And then in step number two, we estimate the price of the stock three years from today using the constant growth model. Bear in mind, if I go back a quick bit, observe that to calculate P sub zero, we need D sub zero right up here, which we then grow at the rate of G. Therefore, for us to get P3, we need D3 right here and grow it at the constant rate of G. And then the denominator is the same. So this is a D3, which you see right here, growing at the constant rate of 5%. And then we divide by the difference between cost of equity, which is a required rate of return on equity, and the growth rate to get P3 to be 48.05. And then we put it all together right here, all right, and find the present value of the stock to be $40.75. So here's a little work for you. It says a firm expects to pay dividends at the end of each of the next four years. All right, so the values are, the cash flows are given here. You don't have to calculate them. Afterwards, we expect dividends to level off at 7% into the foreseeable future, that is. And if your cost of equity, your required rate of return on equity is 16%, then how much would you be willing to pay? Well, I've laid it out here for you on a nice little timeline. And uh, here's your working formula right here and if you do this right your P4 using the constant growth model should come out to be 41.61 and when you put it all together in this pot your correct answer should come out to be about $29.35 and that's all she wrote hope you enjoyed it let's keep learning